I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And uh, we're of Technomadia.com and we're going to try something new and it's a monthly travelogue wrap up of what we've been up to. Yeah, so we, we write about all the stuff on the blog, but let's try putting this on video and uh, throwing it up on YouTube and see how much fun this is. Yeah, just want to kind of share some of what we've been up to, social photos, and it's just kind of fun to reflect back on what we've been up for the month. So, so where, where, where do we start this month at? What's this month Gosh, been? Gosh, we've got to think back a month now, don't we? <laughs> yep. Um, so we started the New Year's in uh, the Anza Barango Desert in Southern California. Near would, Borrego Springs. Near yeah. Borrego Springs. There's a great free boondocking spot there that's kind of on private land. It's unlimited and it was just a beautiful location we kind of went there in mid-December um, and then and ended up staying there through mid jan almost three mid, weeks yeah. I think it was. Three, three full weeks so we went we how long did we manage to get out of our water tanks before we went and, and dumped and filled yeah I think we did 17 days, 17 straight days. Uh, with off our, our tanks we've got a hundred gallons of gray I think 45 of black and about 90 of fresh so mm -hmm. we did pretty well we kind of stretched to see how long we could go and uh, we were also really testing out our solar system, which we've now got 1,400 watts. You'll see 600 watts ground deploy behind us, and we've got 800 watts on the roof. And we have not run a generator or uh, plugged in since mid-December, other than a one one special moment that we'll tell you about as we go through our month. Yeah, so uh, we ended up, st well, we stayed a little bit longer in Anza Barango just because there were just so many awesome people that met up there. So we had a bunch of uh, bloggers there were, were there before the uh, the end of the year. And then after New Year's, we had a whole bunch of, uh, I call them kind of the Airstream crowd. Yes, um, a lot so, of Airstreamers. So uh, Mally Mish, Illuminarium, Airstream Life was there. Mm -hmm. um, Journeys with Happiness and some other folks and a lot of it was organized on Instagram which yes. is kind of cool to see how different our viewers are Connect with each other. connecting yeah. with each other in different ways so mm -hmm. uh, this was kind of a convergence that happened all planned very 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 casually over Instagram yeah. and, and I actually think hanging around with all those Instagrammers have inspired both of us to do a lot more Instagramming ourselves too yeah so we're both posting photos to Instagram on a daily basis mm -hmm. it's just kind of another fun way of making you think differently about your day and finding something special about it to yep. share. That's been yep. kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we ended up hanging out with that crowd for quite a while and then we were very socially overloaded and tired <laughs> and, you know, wanted some alone time. So what did we do next? We went to? Quartzite, the biggest <laughs> gathering of our beers on earth. Yeah, we're a little crazy like that. Um, Quartzite, so, we've been on the road almost nine years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've never been to Quartzite. And for those who've not heard of Quartzite, it has been going on since a the long 70s, time. I think. It's started as a gem and mineral show, swap meet kind of thing, but it's all free BLM land around this tiny small town of Quartzite. So people just started converging there, and then it became this big place that I guess the tribes of RVers would converge for the past decades with huge swap meets. Vendors would come selling everything you could possibly want for an RV. And I guess at its high point, there were you know, hundreds of thousands of people? Yeah, I don't know quite what, you know, I don't think there's really any firm statistics on how many show up because it's, it's so, it's not like a rally in which is organized by yeah. like Good Sam or FMCA or Escapees. It's just kind of all casual and it's all around this yeah. big tent flea yeah. market basically. And, and, and then the camping is spread out over, you know, 30 miles in every direction of town. So there's some places where the RVs are packed in side by side and other places you could still kind of find your own place way out in the desert which is what we thought we were heading out to do yeah, so we so got we, there a bit early yeah we got there we came in a couple uh, days earlier than the big tent officially opened and we went out with some friends who were uh, boondocked off the 14 day free area north of town off plumosa road, plumosa road yeah. it was about what eight ten miles uh, north of town um, it was a great area, nice scenic boondocking. We kind of picked an area off on our own, and sure enough, within a couple of days, we had a whole bunch of folks right around us. Yeah. First um, few days, we couldn't see anybody. It was beautiful, amazing, <laughs> open desert, perfect, incredible boondocking, kind of like where we are now, which we'll get to. But then, suddenly, we had neighbors on all sides. And but. That's just what happened. That's part site. of the experience. Yes. You just have to kind of go with it. Um, but Quartzite was a really interesting experience. Um, there's all sorts of meetups. Uh, there's groups that camp together. So you'll have like the Boomers and then you'll have the Escapees the, the, Doves. And, and the Montana's Owners Association. A lot of RV clubs come yeah, together. Yeah. So uh, that's where they meet up with. So, but none of them are really like official rallies again. And they kind of camp together and people might move a lot around to different groups. And then they're all hosting different anything events. from yeah. potlucks to campfire circles to presentations and yeah. seminars and then you just start getting invitations to all this stuff mm -hmm. and it's all kind of done old school style the social media side's kind of new for it so there's not a lot of organizing online and there's no master calendar anywhere 
Um, so we, we got invited to quite a few formal and informal events and went to a few of them and uh, and had a pretty good time. I guess one of the highlights was uh, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. Yeah, it's uh, done by the Cheap RV Living folks, Bob Wells. He runs a great website there helping folks live very uh, affordably on the road. Um, so we w went out to that. They had a big encampment. I think they were down to just only 75 yeah. uh, rigs when we got there. <laughs> yep. um, and then they asked us to do a little Q&A there. So it was really that fun. That was a blast. It was a blast. We got to yeah. lot, answer a lot of questions about mobile internet and lithium and solar and just living a high-tech lifestyle. Because, uh, you know, we started mm -hmm. in, in a very small RVs. A lot yes. of them live in uh, very small smaller RVs, yeah. uh, camper vans and uh, small, small trailers, small trailers, yeah. trailers and things like that. And we got our start in small trailers. So it was really kind of fun to be able to share some of those experiences and working on the road and um there was also a really great our village meetup yes, uh, over 100 people i think showed up for that that one was was really huge um this time last year chris and i were working on helping build our village we were on the social media side of launching it and helping do the focus right. groups and revising some of the stuff yeah. so this time last year we were helping create it and this time all it took was pressing a button and a hundred people show yeah. up in one Curtis, location. Curtis, the, the founder of our village, came out to court site to host this and you know, it's the power of, of, of the site is just create an event and a hundred people show up. And so yeah, it'd be really interesting to see how sites like our village and Instagram and Facebook start to influence events like court site and bringing more of the social media element in for meeting up yeah. with people. What other uh, meetups of note did we have? Uh, we there? posted one of our own, yeah, so yeah, we did right. that what, the little bar we found there, and we just had people stop by. Um, was there any other formal ones? That, oh, the, the escapees, escapees happy, happy hour. hour. They even had a uh, live music and drones overhead. I mean, it was uh, it was they put on a big happy hour. Yeah. And we got to meet up with a whole bunch of people, um, a lot of uh, followers, a lot of uh, bloggers that we follow. Uh, so it was just really a great experience to meet up with a wide mm -hmm. variety of people. You just don't get that sort of experience very often. Um, so after Quartzsite, we had managed, I think, 10 days there before we just had to say we need our, so <laughs> our alone time because right. it's really hard to be social and get work done and <laughs> boondock yeah. and all so, this other so, stuff. So, so. so in Quartzsite, because everybody's boondocking, there's like these pit stop places where you can go in and dump and fill and apparently you wait in line for a very long time and, well, if you're, you, know, you feel pressure to fill your tanks quick and all that, and they charge you quite a bit to, to dump and fill. So when we're leaving Quartzsite, we're like, you know... For the same price that we would pay to, to fill up and dump in Quartzsite, we can actually get an RV park site for a night using a Passport America discount and fill and dump and wash our tanks and handle our laundry, do all those chores. So we decided to actually go plug in for a night. Yeah, so, you know, it's not a competition to see how many nights in a row you can boondock, although it's kind of fun to see how long you yeah. can do it. So we did go uh, to a... a uh, RV park in Blythe, California, which is only Hidden, about 20... Hidden Beaches RV Park. It was yeah. really beautiful right on the shores of the Colorado River. Yeah, we got for 16 bucks a night. We got a full hookup site. We got the tanks fully dumped. We were able to do a couple rinses through the black tanks, which is important, especially in boondocking. Make sure everything's nicely flushed. Um, got everything flushed, got the laundry done, got the stock up on groceries. Uh, and then uh, we had a secret rendezvous plan. Yes. So yeah, we are here with, um, well, we got here first, but we are down at a, a boondocking in a very uh, isolated location near Cibola National Wildlife Refuge. On BLM land, on not BLM on the National Refuge, yes. there's no, no boondocking allowed there. And with uh, Nina and Paula wheeling it, we found this uh, uh, very isolated spot, and then, well, they showed up. And, uh, oh, no, no, they invited. <laughs> As you might, uh, if you've been following along, uh, since about August, we've been caravanning with Nina and Paul. We both hosted at Cape Blanco Lighthouse back in September. Uh, we went our separate ways up uh, the Oregon coast while well, they continued hosting there met back up in late october in uh, eugene oregon and then we've been pretty much together uh with them all the way through anza barango um uh, in california we brought in the new year celebrating mm -hmm. christmas with them then they went off to uh, yuma arizona for a while and, uh, to court site. and then uh, we went to quartzsite and then we met back up here we've been here now for a week with them in this gorgeous location mm -hmm. and uh, from here they're heading back up north and we're heading east we're probably heading well we might head to yuma well, yeah, but yeah, generally, yeah. generally we're heading, we're heading east, east and yes. going north. So we probably won't see them for probably until maybe next fall. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so from here, we're um, going to continue boondocking around southern Arizona. We've not wintered out here before. So we're looking forward to checking out more boondocking spots. We'll probably go down to the Yuma area next. And that's where we bought our bus three and a half years yeah. ago, but in the summer, <laughs> not recommended. Yes. 120 degree weather. Oh, that was, I still very remember hot. that. that was I, very, I'm kind of afraid hot. to go to Yuma. It's going to be hot, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we'll go down there, check that out, see what it's like in the winter. 
uh, then go find some other great boondocking spots. And then the uh, next big destination is the uh, Escapees Escapade in early March. Yeah, we're actually going to be presenting there. We've got three topics on uh, working on the road, technology and travel, and social media and travel. Um, so we'll be presenting there on March 11th, and that is actually their free day. So if you're in the Tucson, Arizona area in uh, March 11th time frame, uh, that is their free day and you're welcome to come in and uh, come to our presentations and check out and see what an escapade is yeah. all about. And so so that's what we've, where we've been for the past month. What have we been working on? It's been oh, a yeah. bu busy, yeah. busy month actually. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, new year usually means gearing up for new stuff. Uh, we do have some consulting clients that we're working on. Excited for to uh, be announcing yes. that soon what we've <laughs> yeah. been up to uh, on our own projects um, all of our apps are due for uh, refreshing uh, we've got three mobile apps that we've developed uh, coverage shows uh, cell phone coverage maps so you as you're traveling you can know if you're likely to get signal with Verizon AT&T T-Mobile or Sprint all needs an update yep. um, and then we're working the big thing is we're starting to work on an update for our book the mobile internet handbook so that's right. Coming out on the yeah, yeah, we, we just rewrote the darn thing uh, last August and we re released it. We spent all last summer doing a massive rewrite on it, and uh, so much has happened in the last couple months, especially in October, with uh, Millennicom no longer being able to offer Verizon services, um, which was our top pick for, for mobile internet for a lot of yeah. our viewers. Um, the double data deals, and then Verizon changing their unlimited data plans, and there's new frequencies coming out. Uh, uh, Wilson Electronics has rebranded as We Boost. Yes. Wi Fi Rangers refreshed their entire product line. Uh, and there's a bunch of other little yes. things that have just changed. So we're just going to do a quick refresh to the book, get a 2015 yeah. edition out. And then we've been creating a lot of content for the RV Mobile Internet Resource Center and exclusive stuff for the Mobile Internet Aficionado members. So that site has been uh, taking off. We've got a lot of members. If you have joined, thank you very much. Yes, and if you've been considering joining, we are still extending. The, uh, the current pricing, it's $39 a year if you've already bought the book, or $47 if you want to get a package deal with the book in it. Um, and that'll get you the 2014 edition, and you're going to get the 2015 edition for free when it comes out. Uh, we are extending, we're calling that our launch price. Um, we're probably going to be changing around the pricing on the memberships uh, when we launch the 2015 edition. And prices will probably be going up, but we'll also be offering some other service levels yep. as well. Um, so, if you want to get in at the introductory pricing, you'll be uh, locked in as uh, at the mobile yeah. internet aficionados level, which gives you access to our Q&A forums, our in-depth content, our alert newsletter, we do webinars where we answer questions, and just for, we just have a heck of a lot of fun helping folks navigate uh, mobile internet so that uh, you can get on the roads and enjoy it without worrying about all that stuff. Okay. Anything else to note for the past month? I think that's, that gives a good wrap-up. <laughs> um, um, we're just really enjoying a, a winter of boondocking and being out It is out here. great to be out boondocking. Yeah, again. it's is... January. We're in short sleeves. Well, and, we're in long sleeves. Well, yeah. And we're just out <laughs> in beautiful places. And we just love, you know, the openness and just the experience of being out in nature where the only sounds you hear are the burrows wandering by at night and then the bombs from the... Uh, yeah, proving the, the, grounds. You have proving you grounds know. just right over that way. <laughs> but, but, you know, bombs and burrows. It's it's actually kind of cool. And cactus <laughs> and cats. and Lots it's, of hiking. So. And, and, yeah. so it's been a really good month. It's just crazy how fast it goes. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're approaching nine years on the road now. And it's just amazing the things that we have yet to experience and things like quartzite, you know, yeah. finally got to go finally after got to go to so many years. So. And uh, well, I guess we got, we'll see. We'll do this again next month and uh, do these video monthly wrap ups. So. Thank yeah. you for thank you for joining us and uh, checking us out. Yeah, so we'll see you next month. And uh, don't forget, we do our live video chats. We'll be announcing something in mid-February. If you're not on the list, just go to technomaddy.com slash video, uh, and you can get alerted when we do that. And, of course, we'll put the archive up on YouTube as well when that's ready. Um, we haven't picked our topic yet. We'll kind of make that up later in the month. Awesome. Take care. See you later.